Hi everyone, hope you're fine. God has been faithful. My topic today is five things Christians should stop saying. Five things Christians should stop saying. My last topic was on how to walk by faith, not by feelings. I'll drop the link below this video. Please do well to watch these videos to the end to be well enlightened. We all seem to have moments where our mouth seems to be shaped perfectly for our foot to stick in. We can say ignorant things to other people, oftentimes done with good intentions. Let good intentions don't cover up what can be off putting other people. As Christians, we should be especially aware of what we say and how it impacts others. Here are just a few things we may want to consider before we say them. Firstly, that is really just the first world problem. Nothing shows the compassion of Christ while like reminding people their problem is simply incomparable to kids living in poverty or someone living with a terminal illness. Sure, it is good to be aware of the scale of our problems and the grand scheme of things, but Jesus shows he cares about all of our concerns, big and small. When we read about Jesus feeding the 5,000 after several hours of teaching, he didn't dismiss everyone to grab a bite at some stop of the way. He fed them. He didn't shrug off their basic needs for food, even though they likely would have been fine to wait. He met their needs. He showed concern and compassion. As we go through life, we're going to have problems with big and small. But when we take on the attitude of, well, at least it is not as bad as... We tell others we don't care about their problems. That is something Jesus never did. Secondly, I will be praying for you. Don't get me wrong. Prayer is vitally important. That's it. The reality is that too many times Christians use this phrase as a general blanket statement to let someone know we care, but only in a passing, surface level way. It can become almost routine to throw the prayer line wherever someone shares a concern. Sometimes we follow through on it, often we don't. Perhaps instead of just letting someone know we would pray for them, but of their practical ways to serve them in love. Are they sick? Maybe they need a warm meal. Just got laid off? Maybe some extra cash to pay some bills. New mom overwhelmed with a baby? Offer to help them do laundry or clean their house. If you do tell someone we will pray for them, be intentional. Ask them what specifically you can pray for them about. Write it down so you would remember. Call them or text them to check in. Let's not brush off the hearts of others with an empty promise to pray that we will forget. Thirdly, are you safe? I have always imagined the confusion non-Christians must feel to some degree when approached with this question. What exactly am I being saved from? A born in theater? An elevator stuck for over an hour with Justin Bieber's baby? Play no repeat? Of course, evangelism is important, but the wonderful grace of God is too sweet to be crumpled up into a halo cold question. When we follow the examples Jesus gave us, we know the most effective evangelism begins with relationships and serving others. We don't water down the message. We present it in a way where people are attracted to the beauty of the gospel, not turn off by being an uncomfortable question. Fourthly, I have an unspoken prayer request. If you grew up going to church youth group, then you remember the girl or guy that nearly every week let the group know they had a massive need going on in their life, something so devastating, it could only be described with that word of divine secrecy unspoken. There are definitely legitimate reasons to keep the specifics of a prayer request private, but the problem with unspoken prayer requests is that there isn't really a way to follow up. We can't call you next week and ask how the unspoken is doing. If Johnny is a porn addict, but only says he has an unspoken, there is nobody helping keep him accountable. If Lisa's friends are going through a divorce, but we only know it has unspoken, nobody can really come alongside her and be there for her in her darkest moments of sadness. If it's a request we aren't comfortable sharing in a group setting, we need to find out at least one or two other Christians who are willing to pray for us specifically. Lastly, don't worry. God has a plan. 
indeed he does. There is no denying God has a plan for each and every one of us. But that is the last thing people want to hear in a time of crisis. As Christians, we sometimes feel the need to get God off the hook. We have prepped ourselves for every tragedy with some magic Bible verse and a tagline no one will dare argue with. God has a plan. What if we simply say, I don't know why? What if after a teenager dies in a car crash, we admitted we really just don't know why? What if after a teenager dies in a car crash, we admitted we really just don't know why God allowed it to happen? When more than 250 Nigerians, girls, are abducted from a school in the middle of the night, saying, God has a plan, does it really help? The help is in us coming alongside mothers and fathers, weeping, grieving, they are lost and seeking justice. God doesn't need us to explain away tragedies. He wants us to comfort those in the midst of the tragedies. Certainly, there are other things we as Christians say too often that we need to stop. I am guilty of many myself. That is why terms like Christian culture and Christianity exist. When we love others genuinely like Jesus did, we will see that our words won't get in the way of the message. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell for the next video. Thank you.